Hello and welcome back to Fujitsu Forum TV. It's the back end of day one and it's been an action-packed day. 12,500 business leaders have flown in from more than 80 countries around the world to understand the latest challenges happening within business and society. Co-creation for, for success, I should say, is the theme for Fujitsu Forum 2018. As well as hearing uh, the global thought leaders within keynotes, hearing from subject matter experts at Fujitsu and our partners, Attendees also get to experience the exhibition zone. We promised you that you wouldn't miss anything on Fujitsu Forum TV. Let's bring you some pictures of what's happening down in the exhibition zone where attendees get to get hands on with the latest innovation that's impacting business. Uh, the challenge of what we digitize, where we lift data and how we take that information to inform business intelligence and business decisions is critically important to delivering on our agendas. Co-creation for success embodies this whole philosophy. We heard earlier today during the keynote with President Tanaka and Duncan Tate, the head of EMEA region, just the importance of the co-creation message. This afternoon, the, co the collaboration economy keynotes, I, partners coming together to understand key decisions and the solutions is hugely important. An industry which is going through significant change at the moment is manufacturing. This is a industry that's invested billions in the past to actually deliver their factories. They're having to reinvest again with the move to smart factories. But is that investment fair and how do they balance the P&L? Well, these are just some of the questions we're putting to two of Fujitsu's finest. We're joined by uh, Ravi Krishnamurthy and Johan Carstens. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. I, I appreciate you staying around. I know it's late in the day here on, on, on day one. Um, I'm really intrigued by what's going on in manufacturing at the moment. It's a mid huge change. What I want to know is what's the bigger challenge? Is it the move from legacy systems um, and getting technology that's going to give us data, or is the bigger challenge understanding what to do with the data? Uh, yes, manufacturing is going through a paradigm shift, no doubt about it, but it's been going through a paradigm shift for the last hundreds of years now. If you look at manufacturing, the legacy of manufacturing comes from the fact that it is probably one of the most automated functions, uh, or manufacturing automation has been in existence for quite some time now. It's just that it's become much faster, it's become much more agile, and it is, it's become much more proficient now. Um, to answer your specific question, I think the challenges are both. You know, there are manufacturers who have already invested a lot, huge sums of money on automation, and then there's a second wave of automation that is coming in. Um, and then there are manufacturers who are greenfield uh, manufacturing setup, where they already have some of these new technologies incorporated, and then they generate a huge amount of data. So. I think the challenge is on the both sides. On the one side, we have legacy manufacturing plants which are automated, generate data, but keep the data inside. Uh, there are others, on the other side, we have modern manufacturing plants which generate data, but are able to transmit data out. But it has got nothing to do with just the data. It, may all the, it needs to be seamless, number one. And number two is that, what are we doing with the data? What kind of insights we are generating out of it? How are we using the data to help in generating better operational efficiency on the one side? And how are we able to engage with the end customer on the other side is what is more important. So I think both is a challenge, but technologies that have, that have recent technologies that have come in are helping provide a seamless integration of data, both from legacy systems and from new age manufacturing systems. Uh, but as I said, it's not about collecting data, it's not about storing data, but it is about creating insights from the data to help manufacturing on the one side and consumer engagement on the other. Johan, I'm intrigued to pick up on the investment element because billions has been pumped into factories of the past. If I'm a chief officer, I'm having to invest again, but I've not got an endless budget. So how do I balance the P&L? I mean, I know I've got to deliver innovation, but I don't have endless funds. What we, what we currently see is there's a, there's a big difference between investing and spending on IT. Okay. So a lot of the, the traditional manufacturers think they can spend their way into, into a digital world. So they, they're spending money on putting sensors in, but they're not really understanding why they need to put the sensors in. Because everyone's doing sensors, let's all do sensors. What we recommend is you need to invest in your factory. Understand what the business need is, what the business outcome is you sought and then let's all invest in it. Now, I'm not looking big investments. We can look at small investments, small little areas to invest in, but can have a significant impact on your business. So that's how the world is changing currently. And, and we expect over the next two, three, four years, 
You see, the guys who's invested in the, in the factories and manufacturing industry will be the leaders, and the guys who's just currently spending, they will fall behind. So I guess there'll be people watching this that will, uh, that will resonate with them. They'll understand mm. that there's a, a, a value in, in investing and that it's not going to be cost as you, you say. I want to talk about the supply chain. I'm really interested to know whether we're ever going to get to a point where we've the user experience and the customer self-facing applications, are we going to get to a point where they're good enough, where they're doing what they, we want them to be doing? I mean, how far away are we? So I think, Ravi, would you like to... Uh... Yeah, sure. So <laughs> I've, I've always been talking about this in multiple forums. Every manufacturer would have, would, 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 would you know, in whatever might have been the past, howsoever they've been running the businesses, this digital transformation has brought in a absolute change in the mentality of manufacturers. They are not looking at their customers, they are looking at end consumers. End consumers today are asking questions on, how is the product that I'm buying uh, produced? Is it ethically sourced? Uh, does it have carcinogenic elements to it? What are the chemicals that is getting added? Are the farmers or producers of these uh, products that I'm buying um, are fairly treated or not? Is it being bought from a conflict zone or not? These are questions that customers are asking today, even for buying, let's say, a simple cup of coffee or a biscuit. Um, and this is forcing manufacturers to start looking at how they are procuring them on the one side, but more importantly, how to convey the data to the customer. The customer feedback loop is becoming much, much more stronger, and customers are taking decisions based on the data that they get and the insights that they make out of the data uh, from, that they get from the manufacturers. So the data becomes very, very important, but more importantly, this is where the customer engagement for manufacturing becomes that much more important. So I personally feel that the customer engagement will probably become the more uh, stronger driving force in manufacturing uh, in the future, you know, rather than just operational efficiency. Operational efficiency will always remain a very important pillar, but customer engagement is what is going to help manufacturers grow the business, engage their customer better, understand the customer needs much better, and ultimately help them grow the business. A question for both of you. We'll come to you first, Johan. We've been asking everyone that we've interviewed today on Fujitsu Forum TV to look to the horizon. Chief officers, they, they love hearing about what's around the corner, what, what technology is going to impact us. What do you think are the key technologies that's going to drive industry forward over the next few years? So for me, from what I see from my big global customers, it's all about predictive maintenance. It's knowing what to do, when to do it. Not planning a week in advance, but planning years in advance. Really getting the systems in place so you know exactly what's going to happen, when, and how to mitigate it. So pre-planning. I think that, that is one of the big areas that's currently not in the market. No one is really planning. They all look at the market and say, well, okay, we understand what's happening to our products, let's react. Instead of saying, let's plan, and next year we're gonna do this. So everyone knows exactly what's gonna happen. It's a solid channel and a solid investment going into that business. Ravi, what did you think? I, I would divide it into two categories. One is on the operational side, I would probably go with Johan. Mm -hmm. I think predictive, cognitive maintenance is what is going to become the play in the as a manufacturing, uh, you know, important pain point or an important key parameter in the in the horizon. But I would always go back to the end customer again, the consumer again. I would say from a customer engagement, end consumer perspective. I would say mass customization or a lot one production is what is going to become uh, the future trend or the future technology innovation. It is about m making uh, products at mass manufacturing speed, mass manufacturing prices, but very customized for a single customer. Uh, I'll take an example here. Let's take the case of a sneaker, right? Everybody has got a different way of landing their feet, pronation. Everybody would need a different cushioning. Everybody would need different material. Uh, but nobody would want to pay, you know, five times the price of a normal sneaker, mm. right? So I think that is what is going to be the future of manufacturing. It is all about, I call it mass customization, where consumers are going to demand the prices of a mass produced product, but a very bespoke solution for their needs. I think that's going to be the trend which I'm seeing in the manufacturing horizon. Interesting. Let's end on a, an ROI question. Returns can take many guises, financial, efficiency, productivity. 
the CEO watching this is thinking, okay, this is all resonating with me. I can see how this is going to affect my business. How quickly can I see a return? Well, if I give you an example, uh, one of the companies I work with is in the paper industry. So they source their raw materials, the trees, out of, let's say, the Amazon. And they said, well, how can we use IoT? How can we actually benefit by this new technology and digital streams? We very quickly connected their business to the internet, to weather channels. So now we can start seeing when weather fronts come in, we can see when it's gonna rain, we're we'll using this predictive maintenance or predictive analytics. Now suddenly the finance department knows, right, when it's gonna rain in Amazon, roads will flood, I can't ship any logs out, the paper price goes up. So now let's pre-plan, let's move some currency so we can mitigate that, let's pre-buy. So it's really about understanding that and planning your business before it actually happens. And it is absolutely amazing. They had their return on investment in days, wow. not weeks. The and power not... of data with the right insight solving right. a business absolutely. problem. I, I would second uh, what uh, Johan says. So uh, it is not just about looking at a direct investment and a direct return on investment. It is also going to look at what are all the other systems or other processes that are getting impacted, positively impacted by, by this particular transformation that is happening, by the investment that we are, we are putting in place. And we have seen examples of when we've taken the entire complementary functional processes that are getting positively impacted, the return comes in at much, much sooner than what uh, originally would have been impacted. There have been cases uh, where I've seen it with customers, the return on investments have been 14 years, 15 years um, for a direct investment and a direct return. But the moment you ask for complementary functional processes returns also to be put in place, we've seen that happen within nine months. I mean, fascinating. Genuinely, I could talk about this for another half an hour, but unfortunately, <laughs> we're, we're running out of time. I dare say that has chimed with a few of you. And if anyone wants to get in contact with either Johan or Ravi, do drop us a note on our social channels. We'll facilitate an introduction. Sounds like there's a lot going on in manufacturing right now that you need to be talking about in your boardrooms. We're by no means done. There's still interviews left for today. But if that interview has just whetted your appetite and you're thinking, OK, that resonates with me. We've got another cracker at 10.30 tomorrow. We're talking automotive and industry arguably going through its biggest change since the inception of the motor car. The move from the combustion engine to the e-engine. That's simple enough, isn't it? We can innovate around that, we can deliver it. Well, it's not as simple as that. Research and insight is showing that by 2030, German automotive companies may not be leading the industry. Will they lose their crown to Asia? Well, they're the questions we're putting to the team tomorrow morning. So join us at 10.30 for that one. We're not done today. We've got another interview with you at 6 o'clock and then 6.30 today we'll be doing a wrap up on the day's event. So if you've missed any of the interviews, join us at 6.30 and we'll point you in the direction of the interviews you should go and take a look at. Of course, if you missed the earlier keynotes with President Tanaka and Duncan Tate, head of EMEA region, do go and check that one out. 40 minutes of your time if you're a CEO that will be well invested. There was a lovely announcement about the Microsoft relationship with Fujitsu being further extended and how that's going to be benefiting both Fujitsu and Microsoft customers. Plenty more insight like that still to come from Fujitsu Forum TV today. Stay with us.